you tell her uh, husband uh, what to be at one stage, a husband now who is uh, in the army, an army major, someone with a very responsible position. She had plenty of opportunities to, to tell people about this threat that was uh, over her head, that uh, there were killers out there that wanted to get her children. You would think that any normal sex sane person, and I use the right. word sane deliberately because people are suggesting she's not sane. It wasn't the act of a, of a normal mother to behave like that. That was yesterday. Today, today I see a different person. She's a lot calmer. She is a lot more believable. And this is quite a, it's an extremely complicated story that she's telling. And she's almost like one of these people to be a thought comes into her normally is pretty stoic, and I think he was that today, but I noticed a couple of different things about him just this afternoon. For well, one thing, he was leaning way back. He wasn't sitting at the defense table really engaged as he has been through most of this trial. He was sitting all up against the wall of the situation that separates the courtroom from the gallery, sitting back there, looking very pointedly, I thought, at the accused mother. And a lot of times I look at Michael Jackson, and I think he's looking at a fixed point on the wall, thinking about who knows what. In this case, it really seems to me that he was looking straight at his mother, and I saw that at times it seems that she was meeting his game, looking at him back at certain times, and I also noticed him looking at the jury a few times, which gave me, given my vantage point, a fuller view of his game, and he seemed to be looking over at the jurors, watching the game, their reaction. Alcohol, and that is why it finally uh, was revealed. And one other part of the testimony was that the whole, uh, the mother and the son went with uh, Vinny Amon, who's one of the alleged co-conspirators, to the doctor's appointment. They had this very large container of urine that was supposed to be for the sample for the doctor. And then mysteriously, when the woman asked to over to the restroom, she went inside to use it. She came back, next thing she knows, no more urine in the container. That's one of the overt acts of conspiracy. the way they tell you the story, you might not like who they are, you might not like what they've done in the past, 
But you know what? I've shown you enough here to show to you that they're telling you the truth. And, and you know, I think you raise a critical issue that has been muddy, frankly, in the coverage of criminal trials. Prosecutors do not represent victims. They represent the community, they represent the state or the commonwealth. They don't represent the victims in this case, the alleged victims in this case, or the victims in any other case. It's different for a defense attorney because the defense attorney is linked in some way to the defendant, although I would argue even there the defense attorney is representing the Constitution in any way. But this prosecutor takes the case as it comes to him, and that is exactly the strategy they need to take with this The flip side of that, and, and again, as you mentioned, you know, the defense, and the defense attorney in many ways becomes the embodiment, as you said, of the defendant. And right or wrong. It can be, you know, you know, either like me or respect me and equip my clients type of thing, especially <laughs> where um, a, a client doesn't testify, and we still don't know what's going on here with Michael Jackson. You can see him walking into the courtroom now, live, arriving, as we said, just, just at this time every day, uh, heading inside now to the security and then in, into the courtroom. Um, but for the defense here, again, at least they have some a great deal. Who could believe that? So let me read to you a part of this. She's saying, I was acting, I wasn't lying. Here's the question. When you said